Saints, we're just we're just godly proud of what the Lord is doing here. Amen. And anybody could, Brother Adcock could have backed it, Brother Kraft could have, any preacher could have backed it, but thank God that it's done. That's the main thing. And I'd like to see some more happen like that. Praise God. I'd like to go out late and drive out somewhere out that way and amen kick something off or right fan in some way and just have another build a church in a day. Or is it a month? Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you right quick, it's not a church in a day. <laughs> it's a church in a month, maybe. <laughs> and I told him, he was coming to me, he said, man, in 24 hours, can you imagine we're going to be through? I said, brother, <laughs> I patted him back. I said, wishful thinking, my friend. Well, he, he kind of, you don't mean, I said, about a month and a half, two months. Or, he he come to me later, he said, you were right, brother. <laughs> There's still things to do. It'll always be something to do. But I'm so thankful. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I must tell you, what we're dedicated, the power of God falling here, we do what we're just, I'm talking about, this is what dedicates the place, is when the glory of heaven comes down. Amen. And I'm so excited, praise God, to our neighboring pastor. Thank you very much. We need each other. Go see the kingdom go forward. God love you, brothers. Great man of God. Love this great man. We love him very much. Let's welcome the pastor of New Birth Pentecostal Church, Brother Scott Sutton. Amen. You can see it. Hallelujah. Well, amen. I just can't tell you how glad I am to be at this place at this point in time. And uh, uh, it's probably one of the experiences in my life. So I'm a kind of person that likes to, uh, Brother Kevin is here with me, and uh, I, I'm the kind of person that likes to make things happen. But I know that I look at everything that happened, and uh, Brother Ben, I can tell you, I don't know how to do anything. In fact, he can know. In fact, I'm very good at, uh, I was telling uh, Kevin, whenever he, we used to, I had a landscaping business, and uh, he, he worked with me, and we worked together, and I always went and got the trash bags. <laughs> and God was preparing me for this experience. And many experiences in the future, I'm sure. I spent my days at Home Depot. And, um, but I'm so thankful for all of the help that we received, the people that patted us on the back, and people that uh, just were a blessing to us. And I appreciate all of you that are here tonight. Uh, I, it's good to see Kim Wade here tonight. Amen. He's been a blessing to me and helping people know what we were doing here. Thank you, Ken, for being here tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand. He's a <laughs> and, uh, uh, Brother Hall and Brother Bodie, and if I don't mention you, I'm just not going to try. Thank you for being here. And uh, appreciate Brother, Brother Dylan. And I'll say more about that later. He's preaching Sunday, too. But I was thinking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, who are the people that I would want to preach my dedication that the Lord has brought us here? And I thought it was fitting that Brother Kraft would come. Yes. Because the truth of the matter is, I probably wouldn't be in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, in fact, I would have never went to Bible school because there probably wouldn't have been a Bible school. And uh, if he hadn't been pastor in a tremendous church, my wife and her mother may not have ever found this truth and I might not have ever I'd be an unhappy man without my wife that's put up with me for two months actually I wasn't there she didn't put up with me she just wished I'd come home and, and I, I realize that 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 Brother Kraft is such a uh, a pillar of, of, of Pentecost and I appreciate Brother Kraft because because um, he 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 represents so many things that I have in my life that I wouldn't have. And probably the first thing I have is my wife. That she's a godly woman that believes in holiness, that that, that 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 believes in prayer. And she, I came in the other night and and, and I, I could see she was sitting up in the bed and 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 I was like something's wrong. The lights were out. She's sitting up in the bed and I could hear some murmuring. I walked in. I said, "What are you doing?" She said, "I'm just praying with the boys." And I thought to myself, I thank God that the Lord's given me a good wife. Amen. And she, they don't, those things don't just happen. They're taught and they're caught. And I appreciate Brother Kraft blessing us for being here. And, 
And if it wasn't for people in his church, Brother Eddie Duran, uh, you know, he, he, he's Superman number two. He was, if he had been here, he, he took up the slack and, and, and uh, Brother Moody came and sent his guys over and roofed the building. And like I said, it's one of the more humbling experiences of my life because I saw God do what I can't do for myself. And uh, Brother Craig, thank you for being here tonight. And I'd like us to stand together and raise our hands toward heaven and thank God for the men of God in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Phillips. You may be seated. Amen. I'm glad to be here tonight. And uh, Brother Benninghoff just bent, bent over to me and said, I wonder what it feels like to just finish a, a building like this and just just how do you how do you feel? Uh, uh take the congregation through a building program like this. I studied and studied and I said, tired. <laughs> but uh I am so glad to be here tonight, not just the first night of the services, but the first night of these these three meetings. Uh, all of us could say the same thing, but some of you couldn't say it with as much feeling and knowledge as I have. I can remember when Scott first came to the top school, the man, the Kevin, he had a spot for Ken. I don't know if they're, you know, kissing cousins or what, but there's some kind of cousins law. And uh, uh, then uh, the others, but uh, as I, I watched, uh, I watched them both as they begin to not only mature, but as they begin to have to make decisions on their own whether I'm going to really live for God or whether I'm going to just do something else. And they chose God, and they chose the way that was right. And I knew that the blessings of God was on upon them. So we enjoyed them as neighbors for a long time down south. And uh, it, it does mean a lot to me tonight to be able to uh, say these few words. Uh, <clears throat> brother, if I say Scott, I say it affectionately. If you say Scott, you need three slaps, three hair pulls, and a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're like me or Kevin one. But uh, Brother Phillips did reached right into the heart of our church and got one of the finest girls that I have ever had the privilege of being around in our church. Um, Becky is just unbelievable in her walk with the Lord, in her love for God, in her class. She is a first class, wonderful Christian. Besides that, she knows how to be... Just and part of that is genetics because she has a mom sitting there by her that uh, uh, is just, uh, I don't know about that quartet there between them, but you know, we'll have to check on them later. But, uh, and we're so thankful for them. And I can say to young preachers right off the bat, if you marry right, you're okay. If you marry wrong, you better go back to trash bags. That's right. <laughs> Just think, he'd have been still carrying trash bags, hadn't been for Benny. <laughs> she wants me to carry them more. Yeah, no, I have a problem with that too, brother. Folks, uh, I always get the door just in time and say, honey, I'm meant to take that trash out. <laughs> so that's okay. I, you know, it's part of my job. But this is so beautiful. Yes, this building is. It's a it's a, a monument to what can take place with just a little cooperation from everybody. Yes. And uh, we all know that Brother Dylan backed Brother Phillips, and uh, we also know that he's not uh, he's not sorry for it. And all of you that are here tonight to make this very first night a very special night. Not only the life of Brother and Sister Phillips, but the life of, of everyone that is here and everyone that will be here. So many have said tonight that this is just the beginning. And uh, that's right. 
the Bible says, despise not the day of small things. I remember just, a, it seemed like just a few years ago, but it was about 45 years ago, I went into a little town called St. There's been other other works and so forth around. That this is a spot where we needed a real good church. Yes, we needed somebody to come, drive their roots down, stakes down here, and stay here and stay with it and preach the truth, and it'll be blessed. Yes, Amen. In fact, I went to the board a few a good many years ago. Brother Adcock can tell me how many, but it's probably five years ago, something like that. Like I didn't have enough to do, and uh, build our own church and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they said, well, sure, and there's a little, there's a, something on the books that, you know, six months and uh, they renew it. If you're still looking for a building or something gets started, I don't know what it all was. But I had people to come out here and we looked all over town. I'm sure as Brother Phillips did, we couldn't find any place to rent. What we found to rent was out on, uh, I think out on Highway 80. It was, they wanted like $2,500 for a certain building, a certain part of it, first one thing or another. And as time went on, and I just kept praying that God would send somebody this way and uh, that would be, be the right person. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of this opinion. I don't have to be the boss over all the churches. No, sir. All I have to be, all I want it done is to just see it done. Hey. Well, that I'm saying, hey, I think you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Hey, right. If you don't understand what I'm saying, well... Uh, I'm not going to explain it anymore. <laughs> uh, but you, you just you just want to see it happen. So you know we we, we, we branch out and build these build these works. There comes a time after a while that that church that church should be on its own. Yes, sir. And uh, that's what this is all about. Right. In fact, that's what foreign missions is about. That's right. You send a man there, and three things you want it to become: is self uh, supporting, uh, self propagating, and self uh, what's the word? Self, self supporting, self governing, and that's the purpose of this church right here. Right. And I mean, it should be self governing and self supporting and self uh, propagating. propagating. Exactly right. I knew missions would come back to me later, sooner or later. Uh, Brother Sism's at the house, so uh, I'm glad to come back later. But this is a uh, this is a wonderful beginning. But we went to St. Francisville and. Uh, Brother Weeks, the district superintendent, I drove through there and we had, uh, I had, you know, a lot of revivals to preach and I was feeling that that's what I should do. But this little town was laid on my heart to go there and build a church. So I took Brother Weeks, we drove through there and they were digging up the streets and, and they were making all kinds of, it didn't look like anything that you want to uh, go place and build a church. We drove through and he said, listen, he said, why do you want to come here? And uh, he said, Brother Kraft, there's other places you can go. In North Baton Rouge, not too far from where they have the church now, he said, we have a lot that uh, our Brother Adcock, not to akin to this Brother Adcock, our Brother Adcock was going to build a church there. He said, you can start there and, and, and branch out. He said, we'd be glad to, uh, you know, get permission, be no problem at all. I said, but Brother Weeks, you want me to answer the reason why? I'm, I want to come here and build a church. He said, that's what I'd like to know. You drive a new car, drive a new, uh, uh, got a, you know, new family, and you got more places to go and you go. I said, God wants me here. Amen. Yeah. That is all I need. Let me tell you something. Building that church in that little town, I was as happy as I am today. Amen. Amen. Somebody thinks, well, hey, we'll be so happy when we run 500. We'll be so happy when we run five, uh, you know, 2,000, 1,500. Uh, you know, we'll be so happy. You, you'll be just as happy on the way if you'll make yourself happy. Right. Amen. I was as happy as a dead pig in the sunshine, just doing the work of God. Everybody always wants something, a new something or something else. But uh, this piece of property right at the edge of the, ta edge of the town, I drove by, had uh, trees there probably when 
Columbus discovered America, and, and uh, it was about uh, two and a half acres, maybe three acres there, and uh, it was right on a new highway that come out, uh, or was, was connecting the highway. And uh, I went down to the bank, the bank owned it, and I said, how much would you take for this piece of property? And he said, well, I tell you, he said, there's not much to it. He said, it's a gully here and a big bunch of trees here. He said, uh, he said I'll take $1,200 for it. I said, okay, I want you to loan me the money. And, uh, <laughs> so he loaned me the money, $1,200. I went down, they were building Highway 61 all the way on into Baton Rouge, and I found it kind of a wet spell, and there was, uh, there was uh, two turner pulls, there was two dozers, and a scraper sitting there, and a man coming oiling it and greasing it and so forth. I jumped out of the car and went over there, and I got to talking to him. I said, and hey, what are you all doing? He said, it's too wet for us to do anything. I said, I've got some property up here I want you to come look at. He got in the car. We drove back about seven or eight miles, and I said, I want all of this scraped off and all this packed down. I'm going to build a church here. He said, well, that's been no big problem. He said, would you mind paying the, the fuel? I said, I sure wouldn't. And we got him for... I've uh, got two dozers and two uh, turner pulls and, and a scraper for under $800. I remember like $700. For, for He started on Monday morning, and by uh, Friday evening or Saturday afternoon, they were pulling out. And we had about two acres there that was just, just, just clean and, and packed down and solid. And the banker drove out, and he just as we got through it, he, he honked the horn and come over. He said, Reverend said, I wouldn't recognize this. I said, no, I guess not. He said, how much you want for it? I said, it's not for sale. He said, I'll give you $10,000 for it today. I said, I'm sorry, we'd have to go some other place. You can't have it for 10000 My whole point in that is that uh, that is, this is, it does start small. I went back and rededicated the building just about a year or two ago after Sister Craft and I married him. And they'd redone it. Everything in it was brand new, and across the back was new. And and uh, there have been a lot of preachers that's gone out of that place. In fact, one young man that died that we went and prayed for him at the age of 12 or 13. He had Bright's disease. Uh, the family went to Brother uh, Dylan's church because we went to this little little sawmill right at the edge of town and prayed for him. God healed him. They came in the church, and first one thing and another happened. Uh, Brother Phillips, if you just hang true and be faithful right. and uh, right. and don't give up Amen. and uh, Ken Wade, you keep him keep him keep him going, okay? <laughs> don't don't let him down. Hold his hands up, if, right. uh, and if he gets off, you know, too much, tell me about it, and uh, and uh, we'll take care of that radio and all the rest of it, okay? But I'm only kidding. Brother Scott is one of the finest young men in all of the country. Amen. Amen. And I am happy that he is here today. Praise God and all the rest of you. And, and God bless you all. Praise God. Sunday night, I preached the State of the uh, State of the Union Address. State of the Church Address. And I preached an hour and 40 minutes. So I'm preached out now. And you got me just at the right time. Amen. <laughs> Shall we stand together to read the word of the Lord real quickly? Brother uh, Phillips, I'll be back and say some more later, but time is going by real quickly. Chapter 17 of 1 Chronicles. I thought, Brother Benninghoff, oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you, I also know, as well as everybody else knows, that Brother Benninghoff is the one that put this together and made this happen. If God didn't send him to Mississippi for anything else, he sent him here to help Brother Phillips build this church. Amen. And I want you to look at some of this stuff. Have y'all seen the have y'all seen the desk in Brother Phillips' office? That's a museum place place. The President of the United States that was inaugurated today doesn't have a better desk than that. I think you ought to go to the White House and show them how to do, you know? I mean, uh, and this this looks like it's it looks like mine that I paid a whole lot of money for. It, you know? And it's only thing, this one is like mine. It's about three inches too high for me. And uh, on mine, I have a place where you punch a button and raise it. But the whole thing is built so high, I have to punch a button and try to lower it for me. And so they made a mistake. But Brother Benninghoff, God bless you. And you're married to one of the sweetest women out of the state of Indiana. Amen.
and got some three of the finest kids in all the world. We love them very, very much, and we pray God's blessings upon them. All of us preachers ought to pray for our wives more than we ever do. They put up with a whole lot, including mine. Amen. Now it came to pass as David sat in his house that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not be build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in any house since the day that I brought up, the, brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from tabernacle to another, one tabernacle to another. Whatsoever I have walked, whithersoever I, wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word in any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me an house of cedars? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee, whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies. Verse 9. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee, that the Lord will build thee an house. And for subject tonight, I want to speak for a short while on the house that God built. You may be seated. There's another passage of scripture I'd like to quickly read, found in uh, uh, found in Second Chronicles chapter seven and verse sixteen. Brother Benninghoff was talking about the house that God, that Solomon built for the Lord, and all of the dedication. Even in just one part of, the, of, of this particular scripture, the Bible said King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen. Right. Think of that. Right. And 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Right. Have you ever noticed that it also said that it also said that there was 156,000 strangers that worked on the building? The 156,000 people that worked on that building that were not uh, not of the people of God. He put 3,000 here. He put 6,000 here. Some out here in the quarries. Some out here in the forest. The few hewers of wood. And they brought it all together. So uh, it was not all built just by the just by the Israelis themselves. And there's another passage of scripture. Oh, in verse 15 of chapter 7, Second Chronicles. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the, uh, the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Every time you walk in the house of God, you know that his name is here. You know that his eyes are here. And you know that his heart is here perpetually. The Bible said he will not ever remove it from him. Amen. And in the Bible teaches in, in Acts chapter 7 and verse 49. And uh, this is where Stephen was giving, was preaching and finally was, uh, uh, was, uh, became a martyr. He said, but Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet, Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Uh, or what is the place of my rest? Where do I dwell? Where is my place of dwelling? And in Luke the second chapter, and uh, verse... Uh, uh, verse uh, 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He was of the house and lineage of David. The house that God built. You know, God loves people that has desire. 
There's three things that will always work in this life to see things accomplished. It's desire, faith, and works. If you have desire, faith, and works, anything can be accomplished. There's not anything that cannot be accomplished with the mixture of desire and faith and works. David desired things from God. He had such a desire, even as a lad, he had a desire for God. You've seen it in pictures in Sunday school and all around, but it's still the truth, just as a young lad, just as a small lad. In fact, we're not even absolutely positive that, uh, that David had the same mother that all the other seven did, uh, 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 all, the, all the brothers did. He was el else that, or he said, had some kind of genetic throwback for many years because he was of a ruddy complexion. And he had a uh, red face, and he was red-headed. And David was some kind of, uh, uh, he didn't look like the rest of his brothers. And so Samuel was, uh, came to anoint uh, a king. And the Bible said when he came to the house of, uh, uh, he came to the house of uh, Samuel, he said, uh, he said, I will came, come to anoint a king. When Samuel, it was uh, Jesse, I will come to anoint a king. And said, I want you to call your sons, beginning the eldest down to the least. Mm -hmm. And so he called one. But uh, uh, Samuel's Geiger counter didn't go off real good. And he's not the man. And then the second man. And then the third man. And the fourth one. And the fifth one. And the sixth one. And the seventh one. And finally he said, is there not just any more? He said, these are all that I have. Save one. He's way down yonder. Right. He is in at the sheep coat. Uh -huh. He was wading around in sheep manure and he was following the sheep. Uh -huh. You also know a lot about that. And, but following the sheep did not mean that he was a shepherd. It didn't hardly mean that he was an under shepherd. It meant that he was just cleaning up after all the rest. He followed the ewes around that was heavy with lamb. And when they would be born, he would uh, tend to the ewes and tend to the lambs. He was in the sheep coat and took him from following the sheep. We call him a shepherd, and later on he probably was, but a shepherd leads the sheep. He doesn't follow. He follows to make sure that everything, he was the least of the least of the family, and the least and the least in the kind of work that he was involved in. Right. But God reached down and made something very special on him that was so unique that we know more about David than Moses and the other, any other two in the Old Testament. But David had a desire when he looked and saw the heavens, and he looked and saw the sun and the moon and the stars. Who said he even said, Who art man that thou art mindful of him? That you could scatter the stars like diamonds against black velvet. You could split the rising of the sun and for the going down thereof. He said, I'm still going to be praising you. And you know it's a fact. It's the way that we can imagine it. He built his own instruments of, 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 uh, of music. And he strummed the harp. He played the guitar. Or, or, uh, he... he, he uh, 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 fingered the flute, whatever David was good at. David actually was the architect for the uh, for, for the for the temple. All Solomon had to do was take the plans and go according to the plans that God had given to David. You ever thought that through? And besides that, David, when he couldn't build it, he saved up. For every everything else, look at the multiplied millions. I think it comes to about 500 million in today's language. Uh, money be a whole lot more. David, out of his own treasure of saving it up, gave. Some people want to just uh, you know have their names splattered everywhere. That's not the purpose of all of us here. No. It's not the purpose of Brother Phillips. What is somebody else to be saved? We want somebody else to be saved. Amen. And it doesn't matter who you are, Amen. whether you are the, in the sheep coat already or whoever. But David one day, he, he had such a desire. I can almost see David when somebody stepped out on the back porch. It might have been Jesse or might have been his mother. Hollered just as loud as he could. David! And, and he stopped long enough and he heard his voice and and uh, he said, yes, and he said, uh, somebody wants to see you here. And you can see him like, 
almost like Tom Sawyer's. He got to the front gate and, and uh, picked up his big toe and flipped open the latch and swung the gate back and pulled it to and slammed it behind him and, and his breeches legs rolled up if he had on breeches and, and he jumped up on the porch with a, uh, with a straw in his mouth, tipped his hat back and said, Andy, what do you want? And uh, Samuel said, hey, this guy's got something. <laughs> you know, people know whether you do or you don't. And you know what they want? They want reality. They're so sick of fakery and the world is ready to see. They want reality. Reality. And when you see Samuel, and say, he walked over to David. He said, this is the man. And he poured the anointing all upon him. <laughs> Hallelujah. David was anointed three times before he actually reached his apex. Then Brother Phillips said, there'll be, there'll be many anointings in your life. But tonight is probably one of the more special anointings uh, in your lifetime because this is the first church. But we pray not your last church that you will build. Amen. And other things that we'll accomplish in the sight of God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. When I, was, I guess I was about 66 years old, I guess, or something like that. Time goes by, you know, I, sometimes I think I'm 40, but, uh, and 35. Uh, but uh, 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 it came time to build a church. came time to build a church. And, and uh, we'd, we'd built others, but it came time to build a church. And a lot of my friends... Brother Miller, across the countryside, they call me, you mean you are 66 years old, or almost 67 years old, and, and you're going to attempt a building? I said, no big deal. I said, I just turned the page, and there it was, said, build a church. Amen. <laughs> I mean, some people want to get all, ooh, up to, the, don't, it's, this is God's business. This is not mine and yours. Let's go with the flow and enjoy the ride. Amen. Somebody said, you're going to have a heart attack. I said, no, I'm going to let others have the heart attack. Well, I stand around and watch. I'll carry the, gar I'll carry the garbage bag. I'll let them have the heart attack. Well, I hardly hang out down at Home Depot. Oh, Lord. But anyway, David, you can see him as he left. He, he had such a desire. David built himself a house. Nothing wrong with that. God didn't condemn him for it, but David kind of felt guilty. God's dwelling over here, at least the symbol of God, in the Ark of the Covenant, and we know how that is, and no use in giving the whole plan for the tabernacle, but he said, God dwells in, in a tent, and here I am in this beautiful palatial palace, and I'm going to build God a house. And I'm going to build him a house because I, I, he's so big and great, and I want to do something for him, and he's done so much for me, and and I'm going to build him a house. Woo! The house that I build for God is going to be so stupendous the whole world will wonder about it. And, and oh, his heart was swelling. And his muscles was uh, bulging and his biceps was bigger. And here he's, I'm going to build a house for God. You know, that's the way we get when we when we get in the spirit. We want to do something for him. Right. Why? You know, you, you get so excited about God, you'd like to run a two-minute mile. And you get so excited about God, you'd like to pull, pull vault over this building. Amen. We get so excited about God because the things of God are the only things in this world that excite you. That's the only thing. Amen. There's nothing else really that excites me except seeing somebody. You know what was a blessing to me tonight? To see twins up here singing like I've seen them sing all their life. Amen. And heard them sing. And then, then one Jordan in the middle kind of messed it up, you know. But, <laughs> and he's my buddy has been ever since he's been to that too. But I'm just saying, the things of God excite me. Yeah. Excite me. I remember the first time I drove up out here. And since then I brought my friends by here, Brother Scott, and showed them what's going on. And uh, the I, I drove the first time. I drove up out here, and everybody, Brother Benningoff was here, and Brother uh, Smith was here, and Brother Scott was here, and, and everything kind of waiting around and looking around. And you, say, you, see, you know what? All the things I hate I hate Jackson and go somewhere else and build one. Somebody says, hey, are you looking for a church? No, I'm looking for where there is not one. Amen. That's the idea is to get to Praise God, praise God, praise God, because this is what it's all about. Like. Do you still get excited when you're in the past? Because it's all about the beginning. It's all about the beginning. 
it is that he's, he's, he's musing. And the scripture said here that I just read to you a few moments ago, and you can see him, he's thinking out loud, I'm going to build God a house. I'd like to just capture God and put him in a box and hold him and stick him in here and say, this is the house where God is. This, this is the where, you know, if you want to find God, you've got to find him here. Right at this spot. This will be the Mecca. This will be the only spot. I'm going to get God. I'm going to build him a house. He'll be so great. He'll never want to live in the whole world. And he'll quit making other worlds and universes and galaxies and stars and suns and moons. And this is the house that God's going to build. Yeah. That I'm going to build. Amen. And for God, I'm going to put him in a bar. I'm going to fix him a, a, a nice house. And, and if I was there, and Nathan the prophet. He got all excited too. He did that fine. Bless my soul. David, you can do it. Go! Do all that is in thine heart. And the Lord be with thee. And Nathan turned to go. And, and uh, on his way out, God spoke to Nathan and said, Hey, wait a minute. David can't build this house. He's a man of war. And he shed blood. And this is not the way it's supposed to be. Nathan turned on his heel. You can see that gray-eyed prophet as he walked back. And he said, David... And I'm paraphrasing. I'm sorry, David, but you can't you can't build this house. You'd like to. You've got desire. You can see Nathan with the, with the regret. You know why David stayed saved, even though he was messing up half of his life, because he had a prophet right by him. Right. Every time he'd mess up, Nathan said, "You be the man." Amen. Yeah, you straighten up your life over here. You know what he'd say? He'd salute and say, "Yes, please forgive me." Read Psalm 51. Oh. Let all of my sins be passed away. He was quick to find God any time he missed the way. You can see Nathan, he said, hey, you, you can't build a house. You can't build a house. But all of a sudden, bright-eyed, he went over to David and he said, but I'll tell you what God told me. He said he was going to build you one. Yes. David, can you imagine the house that God builds? Wow. The architect of the universe. Right. He's an architect by trade. If you'd see God, he'd have a hammer on this side, and he'd have a ruler on his side. He'd have a, 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 a nail apron here. He need. He's a builder by trade. He said, "Upon this rock I will build thy church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." I'm not so presumptuous as to think that we're the only intelligence. In all of this vast universe, right. Come on. there may be others that we don't know. I don't know about them, and you don't know about them. Right. Right. Tell me you do, and I'll just tell you you're a liar. Uh, At least I can tell you how far as I can see. Amen. <laughs> but I'm telling you to what? We are living in a time when it's very scientifically specific what can be done. It's absolutely amazing what happens happening in the world around us with computers and so forth. I subscribe to the Scientific American. And they, by that, they give me the Scientific American Mind. In the last issue, it said, in the near future, that could be 2030 or 2040. I can show you the article. It said it's not going to be long until they'll be able to download your brain into a hard drive. Think of that. Download your brain into a hard drive. <laughs> And every thought and is stored up here, it'll be it'll be able to that be downloaded. I wonder, would y'all like to have those downloaded where we can all read what's going on? But I can show you the article. It says that, and we think that's we think that's beyond compare. But if you talk to that Arkansas guy on the back porch with his corn cob pipe 150 years ago and told him about airplanes and computers, he said, you're an idiot, amen. Yeah. Or a man walking on the moon said, it can't happen. Right. My friend, if it allows and it can be thought of, it can happen with his desire, phase, and work. Right. Be that as it may, God said, I'm going to build you a house. Right. Can you imagine the house that God built? Right. The house that God is going to build for David. Right. The house that God's going to build for David. Yeah. And, uh, the, I mean, God, if, if you wanted somebody to, you know one thing that all Brother Phillips has to do is to come over and go around and look at some things that, that, uh, that Brother Benninghoff already built. Right. The, the thing with Brother Benninghoff, he has a concept and a detail. He puts it all together. He's kind of like God. It's all just in his mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
If it, you know what I mean? He can draw it out and put it out there if he wants to. He's got it in his mind. And so he goes out there and first thing you know, he's got this thing looking like, like you can't believe it. God has something in mind for David that's never been done before. I'm going to build you a house. And so, a few thousand years later, there was a little, little virgin that was walking along one day. And an angel appeared unto her right. and said, Blessed are you, and blessed is going to be the fruit of your womb, right. as the Catholics would say. Right. And the Bible said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Yeah, right. When as Mary, his mother, was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, they were, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Yeah, right. And that that was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. Right. What we need is the touch of God to where that that's conceived in us is of the Holy Ghost, and that that's brought forward is not another P.L. Brown or Jared Newton. It is a child. It is a Jesus that's brought forward. Amen. You can see, in, in the David, uh, uh, you can see uh, God begin to build David a house. And he started. He started building David a house. He started building the David house. Now, God saw Brother Philip's desires not too awful long ago, but a good while ago. He saw him when he was walking after he'd done all he could do in the former church and all he thought that he could do. He saw the desire. Yeah, I'd like to build a church in Clinton. How's it going to happen? God says, just because you have a desire, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something for you. And so he gets Brother Dylan and he gets everybody together Brother Benninghoff, Superman number one, comes through and he does all of this and all of that. But you know what? You can't build a house either good enough nor big enough. Right. So let me tell you something, Scott. God's going to build you a house. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh. What kind of house is God going to build for you? You're going to pack this wall to wall with people. That's hungry for power. God's going to build for you. Sure, we can get lumber nails together and carpet on the floor. They do that in our room, but that's not the house that God wants. God wants this place filled with Holy Ghost filled people. Baptized in Jesus' name. Let it to the right moment in the left of the church, walking in and out and saying, I love God. Let's clap our hands for the Lord. God, we have the right. God is going to build you a house. You may be seated. Every time somebody walks in and they receive the Holy Ghost and they're baptized, if you got a Baptist tree already in here, maybe you hadn't got one, that's okay. Just don't sprinkle them. Bring them around. Take them with Brother Dylan's or somewhere else and baptize them in Jesus' name. Amen. My point is, God's going to build you a house. All of you that had this desire, Brother Phillips had the dream. Amen. Everybody kind of worked together to make it come to pass, but we still hadn't got the house. The house that God interested in now. He said, you are a temple of God. The Bible says it plainly. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. When did I ever say, build me a house? I don't need a house, but I'm going to build you one. I'm going to build you one. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or where is my place of rest? Let me tell you where it is. It's in the hearts of humanity. That's the throne in the street. Roaming this, uh, 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 this highway up and down. God is going to build Clinton a house. Praise God. Yes, you wanted to build a house. But God said you can So God's going to build you one. And when you come and it's back with sinners, the altar's full. It will say God's a building a house. God's building a house. God's building a house. God's building a house. God's building a house. Building a house. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible said, one by and one accord in one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That's when he started building this house. And for 2,000 years, he's been working on it. He's just about ready to put the steeple on it. A few more souls, and the rapture will take place. We don't know when or where. We don't know when. No, exactly what it's going to take place. But we know there's where those people are, but there's some out here that's going to finally be the last one. Baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. And God's going to say, that's all. The number's made up. Amen. 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 Don't you want to be in the house of God? Amen. 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 Shall we stand together?
Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Amen. 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 you can for God, but God's going to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. He, you can't bring revival, but you can say, God, here it is. You know, I am not of the anti-building philosophy. I know this is kind of a, a, a New Age deal or a Mosaic deal or a Generation X deal. It's really a, a way, out, uh, way out deal that, you, that, that we shouldn't need build houses. We should just always rent. We should always just uh, go to the YMCA or rent something. I am not of that anti-build, of that building, that kind of philosophy. That doesn't work. There needs to be a place in a place where it says, where people know that this is what's going to happen and it's going to happen right here. Amen. So it's right it's right for us to have a building. It's right for us to make it. You made it the best you know how. This is good as you can do with what you've got to do with. So God's going to do for you what you tell us to do for yourself. He's going to do as you have. Like you've never had before. Praise God. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. I don't know. I, 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 I want the Lord to build mine. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I, uh, uh, during this process, you know, I, I, I've been raised in the church. I got the Holy Ghost when I was six years old. I remember receiving the Holy Ghost as a child. I remember receiving the call into the ministry when I was 12. And I remember many apostolic services where the Lord would... You know what it's like. You have a, a vision or a picture or the Lord impresses something on your mind. And you accumulate these things over a period of 30 years. You just have all these things that just stack up in the library of your faith. And I, I, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. Brother Benhoff was working on this this uh, pulpit. It was cold. And Sister Benhoff and I were just sitting there getting tired watching it. It was cold. And I was, I was looking at it. And, and I, I was just looking at watching it all come up. And, and I, I just thought to myself, Lord, huh, nobody can do it like, like you're doing this. Amen. Nobody can do it like God's doing Amen. this. Right. And it's not, it's not for a person or a personality. It's about God has a vision for what He wants the church to be. Yeah. I, I, I want to share this with you. Brother Crash is going to pray a prayer of dedication. For this service, we're going to do this three nights in a row, and when we get through, it's going to be good and dedicated. But I don't remember was before I moved to Jackson, uh, to the Jackson area, when it was. I believe I was in Hazelhurst. I, I had a dream, and I don't dream a lot, but I had this dream. And in this dream, I, I walked into this massive temple. It, it was, in my mind, it was a church, but it was so big, width wise, football fields wide. And it was like a temple of marble floors, marble columns. And as I walked, I knew the Lord was walking with me. And I noticed the, the, the detail begin to grow before my eyes. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, how are we going to build a, a, a church like this? And immediately I, I, I was looking down. Uh, I was looking down and I saw this massive sea of just trees. And I... And I watched as the Lord pulled the, the, the foliage back. The, they just all bent back. And what I saw was a sea of humanity in misery. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to build that church with those people. And that is my vision. Is There is a sea of lost humanity that needs the saving grace of God. And that's the reason why we are here. We are here to see God build the church. Not this local church. Not We're talking about the church. That God could bring forth labors into the field, wherever it may be. 
And I want to, I asked Brother Kraft, I told him the other day that, that, that I wanted him to pray. And I want us all together, I want us to pray. I want us to, to seek the face of God. We need the favor of God. I believe we've had it to this point, but we need the Lord to bless it. I want us to, to just join with Brother Kraft as he prays. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for this very special moment in space and time that, that you have given to us to take everybody's effort, their energy, their thought processes, their muscles, their sinew, their fiber, their money. We bring all of this together and we bring it laid at the foot of the cross. And we give it all to you. And we give it to you as you give us the Holy Ghost baptism. Now we give this to you and dedicate this temple unto you. And dedicate this building unto you. Uh, and knowing, Lord, that this was this is the exact spot and exact place that you wanted it to be. But we pray most of all for those building blocks out of which your church shall be built. For even as the Solomon's temple was built over a period of years out in the out in the countryside, when it was brought together, it was put together without the sound of a hammer or the sound of a saw. Even so it shall be with the church of the living God. And we pray, Lord God, the vision that you gave Brother Phillips will come to pass. And that beyond the uh, the, uh, the leaves and the trees there is this whole sea of humanity that you're building your house out of we're fitly framed together but we're all one body no one is stronger than the other and you've even said in your word that the least the less lesser honorable you give more honor we pray God that you would Receive this offering of love and devotion in yes. our mind and our heart and our soul. Receive it like we give it. Yes. We'll never take it away. It belongs unto you. Yes. I thank you, God, for these good people this very first night. For it will ever be for graven on the hearts and the minds of everyone that's here this very first night. We pray that you would dedicate it now unto you. Sister Phillips, would you come, please? Would you come, please? Brother Phillips did not ask me to do this, but I wish that you would come. Brother Edcock, would you, Brother Dylan, come right now? I want, I want especially not this couple. I want especially not them. Let me tell you what this is. Becky was raised around this. She's had enough oil pour on her probably for run an automobile over a period of years. So we know it. Not that nobody here is bigger or better than anybody else. But I want to especially anoint them for service in this community. And everybody they come in contact with, they'll know that God is in their life. Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this sweet love of Sister Becky that you put in her heart. I pray God that you touch her now. Lord, that you, you have been with her through ups and downs and lonely moments. You've been with her, the loss of her father, with the love of a mother and the love of a church and the love of a whole body of people that has great confidence in her. I know it, Brother Philip, with all now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you give him anointing as he preaches and as he teaches as never before. For this is your building, this is your congregation, this is this is your house. Thank you, God, for the time that Brother Phillips did decide to make his stand for what is truth and what is right. And since then, you've blessed him abundantly. Keep your hand upon him, protect their children. Let the angels of God be sent down to protect them forever. And protect this church, we pray, and the body of people that will come. We ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
find an empty seat, I want you to lay your hand on that empty seat, and I want you to pray that God would take you to somebody to fill that empty seat.